Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today is the 13th of January. I am coming to you live from Bangkok, Thailand. This will be my first podcast recorded in Bangkok, Thailand. And I'm really happy to be here. I've been here about a week. I wanted to spend most of January here to kind of reboot, um, getting a couple projects underway, and I find it's best when I can get away, have a little little extra time, and really focus on uh, my work. And when I'm not working, I can step out and get a foot massage and eat some grilled meats and enjoy the warmth and do some exercising and all these things that are just great for me. So today what I wanted to do is uh, reflect on the topic of travel. I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that think about taking a trip. I know there's a lot of uh, fear about taking big trips outside of the United States. And I'm just going to focus on uh, three things that I have been reminded of um, on this trip. And it's uh, crazy because I've been to 35 countries. I've taken uh, lots of trips, but it's like uh, I kind of forget this stuff in between the trips. So let me let me break down these three things, and I, I hope it helps you to uh, maybe make the decision to take a trip and to actually commit to taking a trip and to really enjoying your trip uh, once it's underway. So first thing is, I always resist traveling. So I think we can all relate to that. There's this thing, this fear about travel, right? It's like, um, why do it, right? You're comfortable where you are. You know, there's great food to eat, there's uh, things to do, families around, whatever. Uh, So there's this like uh, resistance because it's uncomfortable. I think there's like this resistance because my body knows that getting 30,000 feet above the earth in a a big metal tube isn't the smartest thing to do, right? (laughs) It's a pretty vulnerable place. Uh, So I resist it. I resist the uncomfortableness of it, and um, but then once uh, once I start doing it and I land, uh, it's pretty darn great. But there's always this huge resistance to it. And um, on this particular trip, I was planning to do it in December to fin- finish off the year, and I resisted it. And uh, it just seemed like life got in the way, and I couldn't couldn't get away. Um, but I, I committed at the beginning of December and booked everything. And once you make that commitment, uh, a lot of the resistance goes away because you've you know put some uh, put some money into the mix. You know you've uh, got some skin in the game. But I always resist it, and then I love it. So that's number one. Number two, um, this really crazy situation happened on this trip, and and I'm calling this the lesson: um, sit with it, sit with it. So um, I, I signed up for an Airbnb for the whole time I was here. So that was from the 7th of January till the 30th. So that's a long time. And it was about a $1,000 commitment. And the host that, um, you know, whose place I was staying at um, was not responsive to me when I asked for the address. I wanted to see where I was on a map. And if you're familiar with Airbnb, 
uh, you know, you can see the general area. It's like a pin, you know, it's like they show the little house and, you know, it's going to be a few blocks in that, in that vicinity. <clears throat> but this host would not give me the address. And uh, I was in the airport in San Francisco and I contacted Airbnb and I said, look, I've uh, tried to contact them through Airbnb, through your message system. I've tried uh, with Line, which is a Thai, uh, uh, sort of like WhatsApp. I tried through WhatsApp even and nothing, nothing, nothing. So Airbnb contacted them and they told me, well, here's a phone number you can call when you arrive. And I didn't get the address basically until I landed. I had gotten an email. It was still wasn't through the Airbnb system. I got an email that had the address. So I landed at about 1030 at night, 11 o'clock at night. I was super tired after, what, 20 hours of traveling. And I got into a taxi. Taxi took me to where I was going to go. Someone met me, took me to the room, which was kind of weird when I got there because we couldn't go through the front door. We had to walk down this driveway into the parking garage and then walk towards the back of the parking garage to get into a door, which was the elevator, which took us up to the fourth floor of this building. And then I was uh, in my room. So I got to my room, totally exhausted. I just, you know, just basically took my clothes off, crawled into bed and slept for, you know, five or six hours. So I woke up excited about being in, in Bangkok. And then I finally got to look at a map and see where I was. And I was not anywhere near where I was supposed to be. I was a good two miles away. So first thing I did was I contacted the host and I said, uh, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. Do you have anything closer to where I want to be? And no response. So then I contacted Airbnb and I said, this is not where I need to be. This is wrong. Uh, this isn't anything like what I'm supposed to be in. Can you fix this? And then I took a walk and it was a two, it was like a 30 minute walk to get to the neighborhood where I wanted to be. And uh, got a Starbucks and kind of chilled out. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to have to find a new location because the one I'm at isn't going to work. So then for the next 48 hours, uh, Airbnb basically said they were working on it, but uh you know, nothing was happening. And they said the host wouldn't agree to the refund. So I had to present this whole case of, you know, here's what the map said. Here's where I actually was. Here's the picture of what the bedroom's supposed to look like. Here's an actual picture of what the bedroom was supposed to look like. And it was kind of a scam, you know, the whole thing with this host. And um, I eventually, after two days, I said, that's it. I'm, I'm just going to go get a hotel in the neighborhood that I want to be. Will you figure this out? And eventually... Uh, Airbnb gave me a refund for all my all my days there, except for the two that I spent um, sleeping in that in that uh, room. So, the lesson for me was, you know, sometimes things go wrong, and I just need to sit with it. And uh, there's not nothing much I can do. Um, but the only thing I could do was pretty much every six hours was shoot another message off to Airbnb and ask them, can I get an update? And eventually, just being kind of a persistent, loud noise in their ear, um, they uh, agreed and, and, and gave me the refund. So sit with it. That's lesson number two. Sometimes things happen when you travel. You can expect things are not going to go perfectly, and you just got to be patient, do what you can do, but just accept it and don't let it ruin your trip. And the third thing I'm going to say is you got to allow, I, had to, I have to allow myself time to adjust. So when you fly 20 hours and you uh, embrace a 15 hour uh, time difference, your body is, is kind of screwed up because you're not, you're sleeping during the day and, and you're awake during the night. And they say it takes one hour per, uh, one day per hour of time change, which in my case would be two full weeks. So... I try and do it in a week, and I've now been here almost a week, and I'm feeling pretty good. Last night, I got six solid hours of sleep. I got an 80, uh, was my bit, my, my Fitbit score for my sleep. First time I got an 80 in, in a week, into the 80s. So I'm feeling pretty good today. I didn't need to take a nap, and I think I'll be able to sleep pretty well tonight. So the lesson there is just realize that when you 
uh, go to a whole different part of the world, you're going to need some time to adjust just to feel kind of normal and get your energy back. So right now I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm waking up around six. I go out, I take a walk for about an hour. You know, it's good to work exercise into your every single day. Um, that helps you to sleep at night. Uh, then I work a little bit uh, till the afternoon. Then I like to go out, eat, get a massage, see some friends, or just relax in my hotel room while America sleeps. Uh, so those are my thoughts on travel. If you're thinking about taking a trip, I, I recommend you just commit to it. And if you've never been to Thailand and you're thinking about going to Southeast Asia, by all means, do it. It will just open your mind. You will love it here. You will see a whole different way of living your life. Uh, you'll be exposed to some opportunities that you didn't know existed. And um, it will just broaden your horizons. So I highly recommend. It doesn't have to be Thailand. It can be Cambodia. It can be Vietnam. It can be Malaysia. It can be Bali. Um, you know, there's not a huge difference. I love Thailand. I love the whole Buddhist vibe. I love the temples. And um, boy, when when people in Thailand smile at me, I just really feel it in my heart. And, um, you know, I think we're all <laughs> have our uh, past lives, maybe, who knows, but I definitely know that there are certain people that I connect with more than other people. And, um, and with the Thai people, I really connect and it feels good here. All right. So what do we cover? Uh, you're going to resist traveling, but do it anyway. Things are going to happen. You got to just accept that and sit with it. And three, allow, allow yourself time to adjust. And I guess if I had to say four, I wholeheartedly encourage you to take a trip outside of the United States, outside of your comfort zone, and go see how the other world, how other people in other parts of the world live. Uh, it uh, just makes us better human beings. So go do it. All right, that's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You all rock it out there every day. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me and joining me here in the dojo. Be safe out there. This is Nomad J. Truly, I am a nomad right now. Nomad J is saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.